Hello everyone. On this video, we will be looking at using the second derivative test to find the local minimum and maximum points of a graph or function. All right. So, first, before we start, we have to make sure that our function f prime of c equals 0 and your second derivative actually exists on the interval from A to B where that interval from A to B actually contains the value C. Okay. One, if your second derivative at point C is greater than zero or positive, then your function at point C is a local minimum. Okay. Second, if your second derivative at C is less than zero or negative, then your function at point C is a local maximum. Now, third is where it gets a little bit tricky. If your second derivative at C is equal to zero, then you can't use this test. Then this test fails, and you must use the first derivative test. the first derivative test. Alright, so just in case you forgot what the first derivative test is, here's a quick little recap. If your first derivative goes from negative to positive then your function at C is your local minimum oh, and you kind of separate that now if your first derivative goes from positive to negative positive to negative then your function at C is a local maximum Now, if your first derivative doesn't change, that means it doesn't change from positive to negative, it's positive to positive and negative to negative, then that means it's neither local minimum or maximum. So if it does not change, it is either or neither. local minimum or maximum. Okay, so this is your first derivative test. Okay, that's why the second derivative test is actually 
less work. So it it's better for you to make sure that works. You use the first derivative test only if the second derivative test to find your local minimum and maximum doesn't work. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and jump to our first example. All right, so let's say, for example, if you want to find the x coordinate. For all local minima, and minima just means your maximum and minimum, so they kind of combine them to local minima. Given by the function f of x equals x to the ninth power plus 3x to the 8th power, plus 2, using the second derivative test. Okay. Okay. Now sometimes you can graph a function and take a look at it and kind of guess where the local minimum and maximum would be with a function like this you'll have so many twists and turns and curves you won't be able to just look at it with the graph all right so we're going to go ahead and use the second derivative test to solve for our local minimum and maximum okay so we're going to break this down step by step your first step is you want to find your critical points. Find your critical points. And by critical points, we mean where your first derivative is equal to zero. Let me kind of clean that up a little. There we go. All right, so what do we do? We find our first derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 9x to the 8th power plus, bring down at 8, so you have 24x to the 7th and that becomes 0 when you differentiate okay. so we want to know where our first derivative equals 0 if prime of x equals 0 is just finding out where 9x to the 8th plus 24x to the 7th equals 0. All right, so for this one, we can actually factor this out. Okay. So we can factor 3x to the 7th power. So 3x to the 7th power times 3x plus 8 equals 0. Again, if you distribute, you get 9x to the 8th plus 24x to the 7th. Okay, so if we go ahead and set both of those to 0, 3x to the 7th equals 0, or 3x plus 8 equals 0. Okay, so if we divide both sides by 3 and take the 7th root, Either way, you end up with x equals 0, or subtract 8 from both sides, divide by 3, you get x equals negative 8 over 3. Okay. Now, those two are your critical points. All right. Now, what do we do with those? 
plug them into your second derivative to find out if they're the local minimum or maximum. Okay. Plug into your second derivative to find out if they are local minimums or maximums. Okay, now to do that we have to find our second derivative. Okay, so this is actually our second step. Okay, so we find our second derivative. So this is our first derivative, we bring down the 8, so we end up with 72x to the 7. 72x to the 7th. Plus, if we bring down the 7 here, we have 168x to the 6th power. And actually for this one, we can factor it. So you factor if possible. And we can. We can factor out a 24x to the 6th power times 3x plus 7. All right, so now we have our second derivative. We plug in our 0 and negative 8 over 3. Okay, so 4x equals negative 8 over 3. Second derivative, negative 8 over 3 is going to equal 24 times negative 8 over 3 to the 6th power times 3 times negative 8 over 3 plus 7. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, I have to actually calculate all of that. No, you don't. You don't have to calculate it. All you have to do is find out if this is going to be positive or negative. So if you have negative 8 over 3, you multiply that to itself 6 times, you'll end up with a positive. So you have a positive times a positive. So this, we know, is going to be positive. Okay, so what about this factor? You have 3 times negative 8, so you have the 3's canceling out. So you have negative 8 plus 7, which is negative 1. So this is negative. Okay, so you have a positive times a negative, which is going to give you a negative. So you have prime of negative 8 over 3 is less than 0, or negative. Okay, so if you go back to your previous page, I'm just going to cover this up for one second. If your second derivative at point C is less than zero, you know that's a local maximum. Okay, so this lets us know that x equals negative 8 over 3, local maximum C value, or your x value. And if you plug that into your original function, you'll get your f of C. But in most cases, this is the answer they're looking for. They're just looking for the x value. They'll usually tell you if they want it in the form of an ordered pair. All right, so we're running out of room. Okay, so we plugged in our negative 8 over 3. Now we plug in our x equals 0. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our, well, continue this on our next page. Okay, so we're going to continue this here. Now for x equals 0, we know our second derivative at 0 is going to equal 24 times 0 to the 6th power times 3 times 0 plus 7. Okay, so this is 0, this is 0, 
So we know that our second derivative at zero is equal to zero. Okay. Now, if you remember, what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that. Again, I'm just going to cover this up for one second. If you go back, when it's equal to zero, it fails the test, and we must use the first derivative test. So we have to go through these three steps here. Okay, so... Fails the second derivative test. And use the first derivative test. Okay, so when it fails the second, we have to use the first. Alright, so Use the first derivative test, we have to find our first derivative. If prime of x is equal to 3x to the, well, if you remember on the previous page, we've already figured that out. 3x to the 7th plus 3x plus 8. Well, times 3x plus 8, so we went ahead and factored. 3x to the 7th for 3x times 3x plus 8. Okay. Now, we draw our number line. We're at x equals 0. Okay, So that's our critical point. So what we do is we pick a test value on the left, test value on the right, and we see whether or not it's going you know, positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay, and pick test value. Because this is our critical point. Alright. So, I'm just going to pick x equals negative 1 just because it's the easiest number I can pick. Okay. So, pick x equals negative 1. And again, it's completely random. If you want to pick x equals negative a billion, you can. If you want to pick x equals negative 28, you can. I just pick that one because it's the left of it and it's the easiest. Okay, so that means our first derivative, f prime at negative 1, is going to equal 3 times negative 1 to the 7th power times 3 times negative 1 plus 8. All right, and again, I factored it for a reason. Because we know negative 1 to the 7th power is going to, negative number to the 7th power is always going to be negative. Okay, so you have negative times a positive, that makes this one a negative. So if we go to this factor, you have 3 times negative 1, so you have negative 3, though we know this is going to be positive. We don't even have to find out what it is, we just know it's going to be positive. So a negative times a positive is negative. So we know that f prime at negative 1 is going to be negative. Okay, so what if we pick one on the other side? Let's say we pick x equals 1. Which again is completely random. You can pick any number to the right that you want. Okay, so f prime of positive 1, that's going to equal 3 times 1 to the seventh power times 3 times 1 plus 8. Okay, so we know two positive numbers multiplied is going to be positive. And we know this is going to give us a positive answer. Positive times a positive is a positive. So we know that f prime at 1 is going to be positive. Okay, so it goes from negative to positive on both sides of that critical point. So you go from negative to positive, we know that it's a local minimum at x equals zero. So move that up. So f prime of x goes from negative to positive at x equals zero. 
So x equals zero is your local minimum. from the first derivative test. Uh -oh. Oh, leave that up. There we go. First derivative test. All right. So pretty straightforward. No real tricks to it. Alright, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next example. Okay, so what if we wanted to find the x-coordinates? That is up a little. Of all local maxima okay so remember it could say maxima it could say uh, it just stretch out local minimum and maximum it means the same thing maxima is just local minimum and maximum for the graph f of x is equal to x to the 6th power minus 4x to the 5th power plus 10 using the second derivative test. Alright, so what I want you to do I want you to press pause and try to work this one out using the very same steps from the previous example. <clears throat> All right. So I'm assuming you've pressed pause and you work this one out. So if you notice towards the end, there's a little bit of a twist from the last example. But we're going to cover that. Okay, it's your first step, find your critical points. It's just a fancy way of saying find the points where your first derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so first thing we do is find our first derivative. Bring down our six, so f prime of x equals six x to the fifth power. Bring down our 5, so we have minus 20x to the 4th power. And that 10 becomes 0 once you start differentiating. And if you can, it helps to factor. If you can't factor, you're okay, but if you can, it helps to factor. So you have 2x to the 4th power times 3x minus 10. Okay? When you factor, it just makes it go a little bit easier. Okay, so to find out where first derivative is equal to zero, we just find out what 2x to the fourth times 3x minus 10 equals zero. Okay, so if we set both of those to zero, we know that 2x to the fourth equals zero or 3x minus 10 equals zero. Okay, so that lets us know that x can equal 0 or x can equal 10 over 3 once you add 10 and divide by 3. Okay, so these are your critical points. Alright, so from the previous example, what do you do? go to our second step and we plug those into our second derivative to see if there's a local minimum or maxima. Plug 
into your second derivative. We'll plug critical points. I might want to actually say that whole thing out. Don't want to skip steps. Plug critical points. into your second derivative to see if they are local minimum or maximum. There we go. All right, so now we just have to find our second derivative. Okay, so if we find our second derivative here. Bring down our five, so we have 30x to the fourth power minus 80x to the third. And again, factor if you can, it just makes it go by a little bit easier. So we can actually factor this one and factor out 10x to the third power times 3x minus 8. Okay, so now we plug in our two values. So we plug in our x equal 10 over 3. So 4x equals 10 over 3. Our second derivative at 10 over 3 is equal to 10 times 10 over 3 to the third power times 3 times 10 over 3 minus 8. Again, you don't have to solve this. Once you factor it, you just have to see if it's going to be positive or negative. Okay, so this is positive raised to the third power, so that's going to be positive times positive. So these two are positive. And you have the threes canceling out, so 10 minus 8 is 2. So we know this is also positive. So a positive times a positive is going to give you a positive number. Okay, so we know that... Second derivative at 10 over 3 is going to be greater than 0. Okay, so that lets us know that it's a local minimum at that point. Local minimum at x equals 10 over 3. Okay. So now we just have to do the same thing for x equals zero. And we have a little bit of room left here, so we can go ahead and finish this up on this page. So for x equals zero, f double prime at zero, and we kind of separate that a little bit, equals 10 times zero to the third power times 3 times 0 minus 8. So this is just 0 times whatever that is. It doesn't matter, so it's still going to be 0. So your second derivative at 0 is just going to equal 0. So what does that tell us? It fails the second derivative test. So fails the second derivative test. So we're going to use the first derivative test. Use first derivative test. Alright, so we have officially ran out of room on this page. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and finish this up on the next page. Alright, so we go ahead and continue this one on this page. Okay, so using the first derivative test, we know our first derivative. So if we go back, we see that our first derivative 
is right here. 2x to the 4th times 3x minus 10. Equals 2x to the 4th times 3x minus 10. Okay, and we know x equals 0 is our critical point. Okay, remember that's our critical point. So we pick a test value on either side. Pick a test value and pick a test value. Okay, so on the left, again, just to keep it easy, I'll pick x equals negative 1. Okay, so x equals negative 1, and again, that's completely random. Okay, and we plug that into our first derivative. So f prime at negative 1 is equal to 2 times negative 1 to the 4th power times 3 times negative 1 minus 10. Okay, what does that tell us? Well, we know over here, negative 1 multiplied to itself 4 times is positive. So this factor is going to be positive. But this gives you negative 3 minus 10 which is going to be a negative number. So positive times negative is negative. So we know that the first derivative at negative 1 is less than 0 or negative. Okay. Now for the right test value, again, just to keep it simple, we'll pick x equals 1. Pick x equals 1, and again, that's completely random. There's no rule saying I had to pick x equals 1. Okay, so the first derivative at 1 is equal to 2 times 1 to the 4 times 3 times 1 minus 10. Alright, now if you look at this one, of course, this is going to be positive. And if you look at this one, you have 3 minus 10, which is going to be negative. So that means your first derivative at 1 is going to be less than 0. So it's negative again. Okay, so remember, if you, when we set out the rules here, let me go back and find that one. I'm just going to cover this up for a second. Remember, using the first derivative test, if f prime of x does not, does not change in either direction, well, if it does not change on either side of the critical point, excuse me, I had a little brain freeze there, it is neither local minimum nor maximum. Alright, so we see here, it went from negative to negative. It didn't go from negative to positive or positive to negative. It's negative to negative. So since f prime of x is negative on both sides, or decreasing on both sides of x equals 0, There is no local extrema. Okay, you can say extrema, minima, minimum. Extrema and minima is pretty much the same thing. So there's no local extrema at that point. All right, so there... It is possible to have a critical point and have there not be a local minimum or maximum at that point. Okay? So, hopefully this made sense and I will see you on the next video.